Welcome to Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody, it's me, Lady Ada. It's desk time. It's a Sunday night and that means we're going to check in what's going on at my desk. we got a couple little things going on here that I thought we would do a little bit more of a mailbag, show some things that we uh, we received, and maybe also show off some of the stuff I'm, I'm routing out here. Um, so maybe let's uh, let's start with the overhead and we'll we'll show off some of these things that we got. Let's go. Okay. So first up, we finally got the macro pad out. So folks who remember, I've been working on this um, on this show for quite a bit. And uh, you know, it's always like the first product of a category kind of takes the longest because like I have to like learn all the things I didn't know and like you know find parts and like do the layout. It takes a couple cup, takes a couple revisions. This I think took like five revisions, four revisions, um, but it's finally done. So it's a three part piece to be design. Um, where you've got this, uh, this part, get a little dimmer. you've got the, the mat, the mechanical plate, the main PCB plate, and then this really nice decorative back plate that Phil B designed with a kind of a space theme. Cause we were, we were thinking of like mission control, like, you know, what are these, this is like your little mission control area. And uh, I got a sample today of, um, these are called like milk pudding or like pudding top or like double skin, you know, uh, putting caps and uh, this is an add-on kit so it's not like the main alphanumeric kit it's kind of like the you know the mat like the alf the um, number pad area and it's a little like annoying because they're not all the same height like you can kind of see that there is like these are tilted a little different because it's meant for um you know a cherry mx layout where like there's a little bit of a curve to, to make it more you know finger friendly um, but if you put the, the keys in the right order, you know, it's not too bad. Like at least it's, it's a consistent curve. And so this is just me playing around with different keycaps. Um, you know, I wanted to try these out and, and this is also why when I made these key, uh, when I made the, the layout design, I picked, um, well, I don't have one here, but, uh, I picked, uh, north facing LEDs. So the LEDs, if I pull out one here. The LED is on the top because, you know, you can decide where the LED is on um, when you do a, a mechanical key switch layout. And it's never in the center. It always has to be on the side. So it's like, do do it at the top or the bottom? Some people like north, some people like south. But if you do north, it just means that a lot of uh, glow through keycaps look really good because the, the the text is at the top. So this is this is a design. So this is just showing the... The demo. Um, so we made like 150 to start. So we're gonna be we're slowly putting them in the shop as we uh, prep them up. Another thing is like you know how do you how do you prep and prepare for sale and, and sell safely something with like a lot of like this, this is sticking out and this is made out of glass and it's like a little delicate. But I think we've got uh, we've got it close to done. And um, if you haven't picked up a uh, macro pad, just sign up and we're getting more into the shop soon. All right. Some people, some people did get them. So this is the macro pad space theme and uh, pudding cap. So I think this is okay. I think it's okay for us to stock. The other kit was really uneven, but this one's pretty even. I think. I could, I could, I think this would be satisfactory. But yeah, you could, you kind of can't change the layout. Um, we also got this innovation handbook from Digikey. Yeah. Digikey sent we'll, us. We'll be doing it. A deeper dive on Wednesday about this, but this is uh, here now, so we wanted to show it to you. Yeah, so they actually have like a bunch of Adafruit things in here. You'll see some of these photos are a little familiar. This is like our motor driver. Um, but folks who remember the Make Notebooks, this is kind of similar. It's got a little bit more electrical engineering detail to it. Um, but, you know, good reference stuff. I think this would be a great gift for a student. Like, I would have used this all the time when in school I would have like referenced this because a lot of the stuff is like if you're an engineer you're like oh I know some of the, you know I know how to read a resistor code but like a lot of beginners don't so this would be good for like a high school student or a college student um going into engineering or interested in engineering like this is kind of handy too the nanometer to spectrum panel and yeah I put the short URL in the yeah channel. check it out and then like some some Raspberry Pi pinout. I mean, like that's very handy. Beaglebone, Arduino, breadboards, and um, fun digi key facts. <laughs> There's a weather center you can check out. 
It's cold there. And, um, and then a lot of gridded lines of paper, which I really enjoy. I, I like to lay out my designs on gridded paper, so this is cool and you get lots of them so you don't feel like you have to save them. And uh, I think it was pretty cheap too, so you can pick it up. DK, DK Handbook ND or check out Phil's uh, URL. So you did a good job. And they're gonna um, they're gonna definitely do more versions. Like they're just like this is our first one, and I you know I know how it is. You want to get it at the door. And if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations, um, at DigiKey on social media, um, either on like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, and and suggest some things to them because you know it's really easy to add pages if you have good recommendations for it to add. I think they did a lot, but the community, of course, knows even more. All right, any questions? Nope, keep going. All right, so next thing I thought we would do a little, um, a little uh, mailbag. So you got this kit from Cyber City Circuits. Yeah. Our friends make, over there. Make Augusta. Make Augusta, and you, you chatted with them recently, and you, That's you, right. you're chatting with them we, about business Yeah, techniques. we try to help uh, maker companies a lot. Um, you know, at some point, uh, everyone considers you competition, so, you know, people aren't nice to each other. But uh, when folks are first starting out, um, if we can and they want, we always help people out. And even if they're bigger companies, we always try to give advice. Or if they're smaller companies, we always try to give advice and just share stories and try to help them because we uh, didn't really get any help. So um, that's what we do. We pay it forward. So pay Cyber forward. City Circuits, uh, they do a subscription service. They do contract yeah, manufacturing. Yeah, we subscribe. And they have workshops and more. And uh, I talk to them about biz and more. All right. So but we're also is, customers. We're also customers. Okay, so you get like a little storage bag. So this is like a, just a, a, a little swag, which I kind of like. I think that it's cool. Like a lot of these subscription boxes give you a little bit of swag with them. Um, and then here's the kit. And there's some paper. Okay, so we get a little thank you note. This is want to give you a special thank you for the people who enjoyed these. That's nice. Card, a reference card. And this is the 555 timer. So this is a, a reference diagram for a 555. You also get soldering panda with a spacesuit or something going on there. Good, doing good job of soldering. Holding the soldering iron well. Holding the solder well. Nice work. Good panda. Okay, and then this one is the bleep bug kit. And I guess their, their Twitter is signal skew. Okay, let's check it out. I'm just going to dump it all here. Okay. So this is by Signal Skew. So this is a little, uh, there's more detailed information, but let's check out what's going on here. So you got a coin cell battery. you got a custom PCB designed in Denver, Colorado, kitted in Augusta, Georgia. Okay, so this is cool. Made in the U.S. And let's see what we got here. We've got a 556 five, timer chip. So dual 555, five, five. and then it's got a socket, so that's smart because people often solder in chips backwards, so if you have a socket, um, and I also like that they have the silk screen underneath to show you which way to orient it, so this pop in right there. And then you've got a buzzer, piezo buzzer, these are great, so these are nice and loud. And then you can remove this. So inside, um, there's a little piezo with two pins, so you can make nice and bleepy bloopies. You've also got, and these are symmetric. You know, it says, I know it says positive, but they're, they're symmetric. Hold on. Let me get this inserted. Okay, nice tight fit. Um, this is the coin cell battery holder. So this is, goes here. One second. Okay, so it goes like that. You've got a bunch of resistors and capacitors and diodes. So this is going to be part of the timing circuit for the 556. And then switches. Oh, these are nice switches. I like the, the triangular pads on them. I've never seen these switches before. This is a kind of a, I've seen ones that are three in a row, but what I like about these is they're going to be very mechanically stable because they are not planar. They make like a solid triangle. 
I remember when I did through hole kits, the hardest thing was finding, you know, everything has to be through hole and reliable. And uh, that was not easy. So I like these switches. I've never seen them before. I would have used more switches in my kits if I'd, if I'd seen these before. And then uh, I can solder together. And this is an annoyance circuit. So what this does is you have one half of the 555 is going to make like a high pitch tone, like maybe, you know, four kilohertz or something, 10 kilohertz, something nice and beepy. Um, these like to oscillate at like about two to four kilohertz. And then the other 555 um, turns on every, you know, hour or so and beeps once, which is really annoying. I remember like, what was it like our DSL, like our DSL line when the battery's low, it, it beeps like twice an hour, like beep, beep. And then it doesn't beep again for like another hour when yeah. the battery's low. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Yeah. Folks, don't, don't do that in your, make, make a kit to do it. Get it out of your system. Don't make products that have an audio, audible beep that only beeps once an hour because it's not human friendly. Yeah. Just why this is a cool prank. So uh, this is fun to build if you're like a kid and then you stash it somewhere, drive your parents crazy. Good All stuff. Right. All right, so that's the mailbag. A cute kit. So you can subscribe and get a new kit like every month or so. How often do they do it? Yeah. Once a quarter? All right, cool. All right, thank you, Cyber City. All right, what do we got next? Okay, and then I was going to show um, the board I'm working on. I'm just, I have to do a lot of redesigns, and then I thought we'd get right into the great search after that. How's okay, that show the board. Okay. And then okay. tell me when you're ready for great search. Okay, so let's go to beer. Okay, so last week I showed off the IS37. This is 3-1, but this is actually the 4-1. So, uh, having found a two millimeter LED, I started the layout. So using some Eagle Grids tools, I've uh, laid out a nice grid of nine by 13 RGB LEDs. And all the LEDs need a little bit of resistance. Um, they, they don't do, I guess it's constant current, but maybe you want to have a resistor also to help you detect, you know, shorts, maybe, I don't know. So there's a, a resistor array set over here. And then this is the pinout, so it's going to have like, Breakouts here, and then it's going to have um, two STEM QT connectors, and then I have, to, I have to finish routing it. But so far, I was able to, thanks to this LED, I kind of squished the, the pads a little bit so you can see the green row column. This green column goes through the LED, the blue goes on the left side, and the red goes on the right side. And so that way, this is actually all planar. I, don't, I haven't used the bottom of the board yet. So I can use the bottom of the board for the rows and the top for the columns, and it's, like, very nice. I was a little worried that I'd have to use a four-layer board. Um, but thankfully, because, like, this all worked out, and I think these traces are only 8 mil. Well, hold on. I'm in, I'm in inches right now. Sorry, millimeters. This trace is 7 mil, but that's fine. Um, so 7 mil, so it's 7-7, seven, seven, but... It all, like I said, single plane. Very nice. Um, the other board I'm working on is, um, we designed this a while ago. This is, uh, hold on, let me do the, turn off the bottom of the board. Okay. Um, this is uh, a feather wing that does CAN. It's, you know, SPI over CAN using the popular MCP2515. Now, I actually had redesigned this to use the MCP2625, like, which is an all-in-one um, uh, chip that does both the SPI to CAN and the CAN transceiver part. However, I, I can't get that part. So I'm actually reverting back to an earlier version where we had split into an MCP2515, which is like a super popular SPI to CAN converter chip and a separate CAN transceiver. And so this is where we're gonna get into the great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you find things on DigiKey's site this week. We're flip-flopping. We're flipping and flopping. 
So what is the flip? What's a flip and flop? It. So I don't know the technical word for this technique, but I've seen it, and it it tends to happen around part shortage times. Like I've seen, this is one of those like beasts that ev evolves when there's part shortages. Like so, the McRib. Like the McRib. Um, so this is this is designed for a um, can bus uh, adapter for the feather wing. So this here is the MCP twenty five one five in SOIC. And here is the transceiver, which is, I think, I don't know the exact part number. I think it's the MCP24, 2542. So traditionally, originally I wanted to use this, the MCP25625. However, this part is completely gone off the face of the earth. I'm never going to find it for like another year or two. Um, and so I thought, let's let's go back to a design that includes the standalone can controller to spi interface very common and still available plus um a can fd transceiver and between the two of these like you've got your your can design so the only issue is is that now I'm, I'm a little i'm a little burnt right because it's like i waited too long to order parts for my other design which i kind of preferred i thought it was a little superior um, but I didn't want to wait till 2023 to, to get the board out and I don't know when I'm going to get chips. So I don't want to wait. I want to release it. But I'm a little concerned that I'm not going to be able to get, you know, the most common package for this chip is SOIC, but I may not be able to get SOIC. Now, since this board is large enough, I decided to do a flip flop design. What that means is I have the SOIC package out here and then inside the SOIC package, I put the QFN package. And then over here, likewise, if you look, you can see the SOIC package large here. And then inside I have a TDFN package. So there's two packages and I can flip flop between the two. I can, I can click and place whichever one I want. There is a risk to this. You're going to have solder, you know, if you, unless you decide to have separate stencils, if you have one stencil, um, that stencil is going to be cut. You're going to have solder underneath the, um, the chips. However, SOICs, they're not like super flush against the PCB. And so like, I, I don't mind doing it with SOICs. I wouldn't necessarily do it with a TSOP maybe. Um, but SOICs are kind of big and, and they can float a little bit higher. There's, there's a little bit more space. So is this, you know, the best engineering practice? Yeah, probably not. However, uh, desperate times bring desperate measures. So let's go um, DigiKey and find which packages are available for the transceiver and the um, CAN controller. And so we can pick what we're going to, you know, how did I pick what we, what I ended up using? Sounds cool. So, oh, by the way, if anyone was wondering where I, I took the name Flip Flop from, it's from Flip Flop Hub. Um, not flip flops, like, you know, latches and stuff. Um, as I was building like a, the first time I used this, I was like in the middle of building a single speed and I was like, oh, you can use one or the other. It's like a flip flop hub. Okay. I don't know. Made sense at the time. Um, did you get handbook is here, by the way, you can pick that up. So let's start with the MCP 2515. So this is the can controller. And, um, so traditionally again, the SOIC is what you would normally pick up. And you can see here, this is available in four packages, which is good, right? It's like, it's a little counterintuitive, but sometimes if there's multiple packages, again, if you're using the flip-flop design, you're maybe more likely to be able to get something that'll fit. So let's look, let's skip the, the dip and go to SOIC, TSOP, and QFN. Now we're desperate, so we don't care what the packaging is. Normally I would say get cut tape, or tape in real, but I'll take tube because uh, I just, I need chips. So what it looks like is the QFN is in stock now. So it means I could probably launch with the QFN, but you'll note it's more expensive than the SOIC. Like you can get the SOIC for 191 or 209 and the MCP 2515 in QFN is, you know, 224. So it's, oh, sorry, it's, it's a little bit more expensive than the SOIC version. But again, what's really expensive, not having any parts. So um, what I did do just out of curiosity is I added some to my cart to see the lead time. Again, it's not promise, but 
it gives you a sense. So I basically said like, okay, I'm gonna if I bought one thousand of these, you know, they think they're gonna get them, you know, in in August, maybe September. So what I could do is launch this product now using the QFN, and then when the SOIC comes into stock, you know, I can order those now, um, and then when they ship, you know, I can decide. Okay, then I'll I'll switch over to the SOIC and just. We program the pick in place, and that's not a big deal. It takes only like 10, 20 minutes. Um, so the other question is why did I, yeah, so that's why I picked the SOIC and the QFN. There's also a TSOP version, but honestly, because it was out of stock and it was as expensive as the QFN, and I kind of figured it would be like, I, it was like, if I was going to pick two things, I was like, well, I think I'm going to pick the QFN and the SOIC. Like, it was a little bit of a gut thing, but it's also like the QFN is currently in stock and the SOIC is the most popular package. So, like, that's the that's the the two I picked. Um, so the next part was the MCP... Pardon me. Is the MCP 24, 254D. And also, by the way, check the data sheets because they'll also have the packages. So you can see here, there's actually two versions of this. There's the um, 2542 and 2544. I want the 2542, which allows three volt logic and five volt trans transceiver volt. Yeah, it's a converts 3.3 volt logic um, from the um, CAN transceiver, sorry, for the CAN converter the transceiver will let you take three volts in and send three volts out, but convert it to plus or minus five volts on the outside, which is more people like that because it can go a little farther. Anyway, so let's check out the uh, 2542 and see what packages are available. So uh, again, we'll go to transceivers and there are three packages available. Now, unlike the, um, a little bit like the uh, MCP2515, um, you can put, and SOIC, you can kind of put anything underneath, but um, two of these packages are incompatible with each other. Like you can't mix them, um, which is a little sad. So let's look at the bottom and I'll show you. So the SOIC is a standard large SOIC, which is, you know, classic. So there's the 8 TDFN, which is 2 by 3 millimeters, and this has a uh, ground pad underneath it. And that means, of course, you can't put anything underneath it because that ground pad would short to whatever. And you do really need that placement pad when you do your TDFNs. So I have to choose the SOIC and either the 2 by 3 TDFN or the 3 by 3 DFN, which are kind of almost the same thing. I'm kind of like a little confused why they have two nearly identical SMT packages. Like, like yeah, like the SOIC, TSOP, and DFN, I can understand, but TDFN and DFN? I don't know. Maybe some customer really wanted it. Um, so SOIC, so let's see if any of these are in stock. None of them are in stock. Um, they're not in stock here. Uh, but you can... Uh, that's weird. Oh, okay, I thought there were in stock, but they're not. So, the SOIC is um, this one, the dash E S N, and let's see when. I might have this in stock. So, right, so these are going to be in stock maybe in about a month. So that's a good choice to pick for um, the package. And then the other package, I ended up with the uh, TDFN. And let's try this again. Add to cart. And this one also, some of them are going to come in in 2021, the rest in 2022. I don't know. We'll find out if, if the, the dates get pulled in a little bit. Um, another thing is when you're doing the flip flop design, um, if you're doing like often the pins line up quite nicely. So like a TSOP or a QFN, you can see how like 
all the lines kind of go out spidery very easily. However, um, the only package that could really could fit under the SOIC without having um, the V is on. The only package I could really fit under this SOIC and have it uh, route out to get to the remaining pads without having vias everywhere was the 2x3 TDFN. If you have some like really small, one second. if you have some really small chips, sometimes or if it's like a really wide SOIC, you can sometimes put it between the pads and like have it snake out. Um, however, in this case, it really won't fit. So the only way to do it is sort of to do it like right angle in this way and then try to get like all the signals out through the side, which is, yeah, it's all right. Okay, so this is my guess. I think it's gonna work out. I think I'm gonna be able to get the SOIC version of this. I think for this chip, I'm going to end up mixing and matching between the two, but it's free to add a flip-flop package onto your PCB design. So you might as well do it, right? Like it doesn't cost anything. The PCB, did, once you finish and tape out the PCB, you're done. So I'm going to be doing this for like the next year, probably, um, <laughs> like until I can get chips again, because I don't know when that's going to be. So you're going to see a lot of designs that I do that have like SOIT and then a QFN or like, a TSOP and like a TDFN underneath it. Whenever there's more than one package, I used to just go with like the smallest package or the cheapest package, or the most convenient one, but that time's kind of not happening right now. So um, you're gonna see a bunch of these, including uh, one of the designs that I finished last week for an EEPROM breakout. EEPROMs are available in uh, TSOP or SOIC. And so uh, when I did the layout for the design, I added both. And that's the great search. All right. Good um, luck, everybody. Some, someone has some good uh, comments here. Yeah. Not a question or anything. They just said, so much fun here. Early 90s, GPO RAM shortages at ATI. Boards laid out for SRAM, DRAM, and VRAM. And through hole PLCC, SOIC, if it arrived, it got soldered. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. this is, this is, so this back. is not the first time it's happened. Yeah. And I was actually wondering, like, when there was the shortage in 2009, where right after a recession, there's always like this, like, terrible shortage. And I remember that the Arduino SMD came out because you couldn't get yeah you couldn't get dip chips, so there was a special version of the Arduino Uno that came out that had an SMD chip because and now they've actually I think reverted back to having the dip chip, yeah. but at the time you couldn't and you can kind of tell that they sort of just deleted the dip. And, and plugged in the QFN. I remember people thought, like, this is the end of Arduino because they just want, like, a permanently soldered chip in. Yeah. Um, no. There's other stuff that you should worry about Arduino. I have an article coming out this week, but that oh, ain't it. Oh, here it is. This is the one I was thinking of. That so wasn't this is... it. That ain't it. This was clever, and I'm glad they did it. So this... Hold on. Let me show the image. Because I thought this this is interesting. Can I view an image? Can I view an image? Okay. So this image... You can see here, it's a flip-flop design. Yeah. They have a uh, QFP and a QFN, but you see it, it routes very nicely. So they, they probably started with, um, you know, the dip was gone, so they're like, okay, you know, like I, I didn't design this, I'm just guessing. Started with the dip, they pulled the dip out, put the um, uh, QFN in, because dips, you actually can, they're so thin, you actually can't really put any chips in between. And then they quickly were like, uh-oh, we can't even get QFNs, we can get QFPs. Okay, make the package, uh, yeah. QFP. Now, if anyone ever learns what the official name for this technique is, I'd like to know, because I call it flip-flopping, but I don't know. It that's sounds the... like dual sockets. It's not, it's not dual yeah, sockets. Yeah, dual sourceable. Well, it could be more than two. Yeah, I don't know. All right, and, All right. That, and that's a great search. Thank you, everybody. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. All right. So, uh, multi-sourceable design, perhaps. Okay. okay. I, I, I like flip-flopping. Nobody's come up with a better name than a flip-flop. Yeah. I don't think anyone... Um, I think that was normally associated with uh, politics, but people don't even flip-flop anymore. They just uh, they just double down on the same they dumb thing. They just straight thing. up lied. Uh, and, everybody and lies down. and double so down. Yeah. It's not double downing. 
I think it's flip flopping. Yeah. It's like a flip flop hub. Poly padding. Poly um, padding. That's a good one. Yeah. Although I think it's probably like some trademark owned by like some company that makes Who air knows? packets for shipping. All right. So um, so that's it for tonight. Last bit of news. I'm going to put links in the chat. So speaking of part shortages, we're only going to have a few Ada boxes left. So we opened it up because we have some slots open since we're not shipping to Europe or the UK or, or Switzerland. Switzerland right now. So we have a limited number. I'm going to play a uh, little song at the end. It's about three minutes and 33 seconds exactly. Um, either that's significant and, and means something and or it doesn't. It's shipping soon. Yeah. So Real th soon. theoretically, Ada Box might ship might be shipping in like uh, it's gonna ship in July. Couple a couple weeks. Yeah. So I'm gonna play that song and everything, but I'll also put in the the uh, the links. It's just adabox.com if you haven't been, you know. If you don't know what we're up to, that's what we're up to. All right. That's what we've been working on. Um, so that's the big news. Play the jams. Um, this week, um, we have all the regular shows except for Friday. That's uh, right. Friday. Friday is not a Friday is not the deep dive, but the rest of the week the regular shows. Day off, and then next Monday also it's a little slow. We're gonna have to long. Monday know, there's no shows on Monday, so. I know, but we're taking long. But there, your order may be delayed. Yeah, I mean everybody in everybody in the U.S. is basically taking off Friday. Come on, Monday. man, just. If you made it this far, you get a day. <laughs> you made it this far. All right, so that's it. That's that's later this week. I'm gonna play the song. Go get an box. Bye, everybody. Bye.